And welcome to Crown Cellars and uh, Bonham's inaugural auction of fine and rare wines here in Hong Kong. My name is Patrick Mead. I'll be your auctioneer this evening. With that, we begin the sale. And our first lot uh, is lot number one. It is the uh, Chalet Bay Cheval from 1989. We've got six bottles in the lot. We're going to start with it here at uh, 2,000 Hong Kong dollars. 2,000 dollars. We're now 2,000. At 2,000 dollars now. In the world of fine wine, one name stands out for all the wrong reasons. Rudy Karawan. In Jakarta, Indonesia, his birth name was Zing Wang Hung, but his Chinese father reportedly gave him an Indonesia, the Indonesian name to help him maintain autonomy because they were, his father was the brother to, and he was the nephew of Eddie Tansel and Hendra Raharta, who were both Chinese Indonesian business people that were convicted of embezzlement and fraud to the tune of billions involving one of Indonesia's largest banks and real estate. And yes, that is Eddie Tanzel with the current Communist Party chairman uh, and president of China, Zhao Ping. If you think communism is for the people, there's no help for you. You're just stupid. It's all about elites maintaining control over everyone else. But anyway, Curry One attended uh, California State University, Northridge, and in the late in the late nineties he arrived in the US on a student visa around nineteen ninety eight. Carawan unsuccessfully sought political ins- asylum in the United States after his student visa expired. But after all of his appeals were exhausted by 2003, U.S. and U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement persuaded a court to order Carawan to submit to a voluntary deportation. He was directed to leave the country no later than April 25, 2003. Instead, he disappeared into the United States like so many people with dubious immigration status often do. However, Rudy was a bit of a savant in that he had a taste for wine. People say that he could literally taste a wine, tell you about the tannins, the vintage, even the the vineyard that produced it just by taste. So this... The young 29-year-old collector fascinated many and became the icon of this generation of high rollers. His technique to retain power, to bring increasingly rare bottles to the dinners. It's interesting, uh, the 12 Angry Men, Rudy was sort of the leader. He was the leader, really, and uh, they all admired him. And it was again, oh, here comes Rudy. Rudy's coming to this dinner. You know, what's Rudy going to bring? What, what incredible old wine that none of us have ever seen before will he bring? This was an incredibly talented young man that if he had used his talents for good, would have had no issues whatsoever. But he did make a name for himself in wine uh, connoisseur circles for his immense palate and the fact that he had used money that his father had sent him because some of the billions are of, of from their former embezzlement scandals were still you know with the family, so he was able to take some of this money and uh, purchase a very prominent wine collection and attend many wine auctions where he hobnobbed with the elite of the elite. With this impeccable palate and a seemingly endless supply of rare wines, he quickly gained the trust of collectors and auction houses, including the most high-end. He would spend as much as $1 million a month buying auction lots, and by 2006, he had drawn the attention of the top wine connoisseurs. At the same time, he began hosting tastings of rare wines with other collectors, and he showed so much affinity for ultra-luxury Burgundy producer Domaine de la Romane Conti, and I'm sure I mispronounced that. At these events, he became known as Dr. Conti. At this time, he was described as possessing arguably the greatest wine cellar on earth. He wound up consigning lots with John Capone in two major auctions at Acker Merrill and Condit in 2006, netting 
$10.6 million, that is $15 million today in the in the first and $24.7 million in the second. So these were huge lots that he both bought and sold. To date on the second auction was the record for a single sale of wine at the auction. This is how much money Rudy was throwing around. During those two auctions, he offered his own a sale of eight magnums of 1947 Chateau Lafour. A few days later after the second sale, he secured a bank loan for $8.84 million from Acker Maryland Condit and secured, uh, the, which was secured by wine in his cellar and art in his art collection. Uh, when he would host these tastings and be at wine auctions, he would share the wine with not only the other elites present and other connoisseurs present, but he would also offer the wait staff and the auction staff tastes of the wine, up to full glasses of this thousand, hundred thousand dollar wine, and was considered quite generous and good to the wait staff. And I applaud him for that. I mean you can tell something about a person's character by how they treat people like servers, taxi drivers, Uber drivers. So I want to give him props for being a, a good person in that regard. But he would also always ask for any of the empty bottles. And he would cover this by saying he also collected the bottles of fine vintages. And it went along with his his collection. He was always seen as rather eccentric. So this just kind of fit in. But it was kind of, you know, weird. In 2007, Curawan had consigned several magnums of 1982 Chateau Le Pen at Christie's, a very high-end auction house in Los Angeles. The bottles were featured on the auction catalog's cover. However, representatives of the vineyard contacted the auction house and indicated that those bottles were fake as they had not produced that particular type and vintage in 1982. Christie's withdrew the lot from the auction, and after further review of some of Carowan's bottles, they discovered that several of them could not have been produced by the in the vintages and years that they were purportedly to do. And also, after further experts looking into it, they realized that some of the labels were slightly off from what the vineyards had produced in reality. So this is where the wheels begin to fall off for Rudy Carowan. Probably his biggest mistake after several wine vintages were pulled from several wine auctions in California was to have Bill Koch, and I'm talking Koch Brothers, the industrialists that own lots of stuff and contribute a lot to politicians on both sides of the aisle, who Bill happens to be a very big wine collector with a, a seller valued at 20 to $30 million dollars decided that he would take a look at some of the bottles he had bought from Carowan's lots at previous wine collectors, wine auctions, and basically discovered that he had also bought a bunch of fake vintages that did not exist or were never produced. Uh, at the same time, Carowan defaulted on that $8.84 million loan that he had taken out, which showed that he was having some financial trouble. And on March 8, 2012, the FBI arrested Carowan at his home for fraud in excess of $50 million. When they searched his home, they found inexpensive wines. These are wines you can buy at any grocery store. And things like that. In his kitchen, there was a lab where he was taking cheap wines mixing them together to create other flavors, and then bottling them in those bottles that he would save, printing out labels that look very, very close, though they were slightly off from what they should be, as well as corks, stamps, and other tools needed to have a bottling operation that he was creating his own Frankenwine. Now, some of these did contain traces of very expensive wines, so he would put a little bit of luxury in there, you know, next to the the yellow, uh, the, the yellow kangaroo <laughs> that he might also be passing off. And so because of that, and because he had sold some of these vintages and shipped them out, the feds then charged him also with mail fraud and wire fraud. 
His trial began on December 9th, 2013. And the reason it took so long is that so many of these vineyards had also wanted to be involved in the criminal prosecution as well as they were filing their own civil suits. So from December 9th, 2013 to December 18th, 2013, the trial was all the rage in the California wine culture and the jury found him guilty. On August 7th, 2014, he was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison. Once he completed his stint in federal prison, which was just recently, he was officially deported back to Indonesia as far as we know. Collectors and connoisseurs strive to protect themselves from falling victim to people like Rudy Calwan, but that remains but he still remains a cautionary tale of greed and deception in the pursuit of luxury. The world of fine wine will never be the same again. And everyone, I just thought this was a fun little white collar crime. I do adore white collar crimes. Let me know down below if you you agree. It's a good break from all the dark history and the bloody true crime stuff that I cover on here. But in any case, I thought you would enjoy this and I will be back really, really soon with another video. Until next time, keep on crying.